So, Chuck. Yeah. I, I've done this experiment. I asked people, where's the sun at 12 noon? And right. invariably, more than half the cases, they point straight up. Straight up. High and what's, what's odd is it means they've never looked. Because for the entire continental United States, right. at no time of day and no day of the year okay. is the sun ever directly overhead. You know why? I think it's difficult because it's hard to look at the sun. Yes, and you shouldn't look at the sun. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. But you might notice maybe at noon the shadows go away because it's pointing straight down. True. But so it just means modern people just not observant. They repeat things they've heard. And True. puts the word high in front of noon leaves people thinking that it's directly over. It's just not true. It leaves the, some people thinking it's directly overhead. Okay. <laughs> it leaves other people thinking something totally different. I knew it. Very, it's a very Western concept, right? Yes. It's where you kill a man in the middle of the day. No, Hi. Chuck, no. Stop. Stop. <laughs> no, it's not where you, it's where you have a shootout in the middle yes, of the day. Yes, that's true. It's Whether or not anybody dies. That's right. That's how you True, do. true, true, true. Right. Meet you at high noon. All right. So the... There are places on Earth where the sun is occasionally directly overhead, and it's between 23 and a half degrees north latitude and 23 and a half degrees south latitude. And 23 and a half degrees is the tilt of Earth's axis okay. in our orbit. So that's nice. where that number comes from. But if you go in that range, those are what we call the tropics. And there are days of the year where the sun is actually directly overhead. Okay. Cool. If you're between those two zones, and right. the Tropic of Cancer is falls just below Key West, just below Key West. Okay. So, so that's why nobody in the continental United States has Hawaii ever. is about 15 degrees north latitude. So Hawaii gets to experience this, but not anybody else in the in the continental United States. So, the general trend here is. The farther away you are from the equator, the closer you are to the poles, right. the lower the noontime sun gets. Gotcha. Okay? So if in the tropics, it's occasionally directly overhead, as you inch your way out of the tropics, the noontime sun gets lower and lower and lower in the sky. Right. Okay? okay. Now, that will change seasonally. In New York City, where we live, where we record Star Talk, the noon sun in the winter on December 21st, first day of winter, doesn't get more than 26 degrees above the horizon. Ooh. That's high noon, December 21st. Wow. Now you go to June 21st, the high noon sun is higher, but still not directly overhead. Gotcha. All right, directly overhead would be 90 degrees up. It's right. about, I got to look it up, it's 74 degrees, something like that. Wow. High. That's high, but it's not It's high, still, but that's a long way from directly overhead. A long way from directly overhead. Okay. Yeah. So, all I'm saying is that the highest the sun gets in any day of the year is right. lower as you approach the poles. Okay? Gotcha. Okay. All right. So... You keep marching, you get to the Arctic Circle. Okay. 66 and a half degrees of latitude. So when you hit the Arctic Circle, there is a day where the sun never sets and it stays that way throughout the summer. And then it drops drift back down to the horizon and then it goes below the horizon for the winter months. And then it's not to be seen again. Oh. Until summertime. Yeah. So they basically just have day and night. <laughs> yes, two seasons, day and night. <laughs> day <laughs> exactly. Day and night. All right. So now that makes an interesting fact. Okay. Let's go to the moon. All right. Let's go to the moon and go to the poles. All right. Okay. Let's go to the South Pole. No different. We can go to the North Pole, but I got, we got good stuff going on in the South Pole for this explainer. Okay. Right? So you go to the South Pole. As you approach the pole, the sun, the height of the sun above the horizon doesn't get very high. Right? Just like I described here on Earth. Right. Okay? So the noontime sun in the South Pole of the moon is very low on the horizon. 
Okay. Are we there? Okay. Makes, okay. I'm now, listening. there are craters on the moon. Yes. As you've surely seen. Mm-hmm. Some craters are at the South Pole. The okay. craters everywhere. Some are in the South. Craters have rims. Mm-hmm. Okay. Rims that stick up a little bit above the terrain. Right. All right. Hmm. Craters are deep. Yes. I got a deep crater and a rim, and I'm at the South Pole. Oh, my gosh. When the sun is up at the moon's South Pole, it does not get high enough to peer above the rim of the crater. So the base of some craters at the lunar South Pole never, ever see sunlight. Wow. Okay. So it is literally where the sun don't shine. <laughs> okay. Now. Yes. There's another South Pole where the sun don't shine. <laughs> Just let you know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hey, guys. Apologies for the interruption, but I wanted to take a quick break and thank our partners at AG1 for sponsoring today's video. Those of you who've been following know that I've been taking AG1 consistently for the last month, and I gotta say, I love it. I've noticed that I have more energy, and I no longer get that 3.30 p.m. crash that makes my day like super, super difficult. Now, that's my personal experience, but I'd love to hear what AG1 is doing for you. If you don't already know, AG1 is a daily foundational nutrition that supports whole body health with some reports stating that 92% of Americans have at least one kind of vitamin deficiency, it's important that we get our nutrients in where we can. It's quick, it's easy, and for a schedule like mine, it is necessary to fit into my everyday routine. And I do take it every day. So whether you're looking up your daily dose of vitamin C, zinc, biotin, or other micronutrients or phytonutrients to keep your body in check, you should consider giving AG1 a shot. If you're interested in trying it for yourself, make sure you visit drinkag1.com slash startalk to get a free one-year supply of AG1 vitamin D3 plus K2 and five AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. By the way, the travel packs are great for fitting into my lifestyle. Thanks again to our friends at AG1 for sponsoring today's video. What's interesting on the moon is because there's no air and there's no sky get, getting illuminated by sunlight, right? Why do we have a blue sky? Because light comes from the sun, scatters into the atmosphere to say, oh, we have clear skies. Actually, no, you're looking at blue light scattered off of air molecules. Right. You're not actually looking at the universe. Right. The universe is cloaked by the scattered light. And because the scattered light is everywhere, if something is in a shadow, it's a little darker, but you could see it. Because light's coming from everywhere other than the sun as well. Right. All right? I mean, think about it. If the sun were over to the left and there's a tree and the tree makes a shadow, you shouldn't be able to see anything inside the shadow because the sun is not illuminating it. It should be completely dark, but it's not. Because light is coming from all the scattered light elsewhere in the atmosphere. On the moon, where there is no atmosphere, there's no scattered light. Shadows are pitch black. Ooh. That's all right. That's actually kind of cool. It is kind of cool. It is kind of, unless you have something reflecting light into the shadow. Right. There's no scattered light from the atmosphere. But And by the way, that's why you can see stars in the daytime with the sun sitting in the sky. Oh, by the way, there are people who are sure we did not land on the moon. And they looked at the photos of Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin in daylight. And they say, we know you're supposed to see stars in daylight. And I don't see any stars in this photo. Right. Okay, so therefore, we didn't really go to the moon. As though NASA wouldn't know to fake that, if that were the case. Okay. <laughs> we think NASA are idiots? That, that, that kind of makes a lot of sense. <laughs> if you know that, well, then we, the space people, definitely knew we it, too. Definitely know it, too. So why so, wouldn't we just throw, throw a little dots in the back and let you see some stars? Okay, what the person doesn't know is how photography works. Okay, the terrain is so bright from the sun, right. the aperture of the camera closes down and cannot register the light the of light. dim things such as the stars in the sky. So that's right. why. 
That's how that plays that, out. Yeah, there you go. That's true. That's okay. absolutely the case. All right. So let's get back to the South Pole. Okay. So it's not the sun not only doesn't shine there, you can't even see in it. Right. All right. So now, what's making these craters? Um, some well, the, a, a meteor or something. Yeah, something stuff, hit it. St- thank you. <laughs> I don't. I don't ask complicated questions. Yeah, something some, hit it. it was just like something hit it. Okay, right. so meteors can be made of rock or they can be made of ice. They're comet fragments that are out there. So both can make these craters. Right. All right. So now, if a comet hits the moon, and the so the material is now not rock. It's like water and other ices, like ammonia ice and things. Let's look, focus on the water. The water molecules, there's a lot of energy there. It'll evaporate. The water molecule flies up, okay, and then falls back to the moon's surface. All right. Right. All right. Well, if it falls to a part of the surface that's in sunlight, it'll eventually evaporate right. and escape. Right. But suppose it happens to fall where the sun don't shine. <laughs> It stays frozen. It stays frozen. It's called a cold trap. That's the official term for it. A nice. cold trap. And it falls in there, and it stays there for billions of years. Ooh. Let me say that right. Billions. Billions. Of years. <laughs> billions of years. And so the next mission to the moon, Artemis, okay? The, the one where we're going to land, Artemis mm. three. Right. Okay, this is NASA's mission to the way, Artemis is the twin sister of Apollo. And oh. Artemis was the goddess of the moon and other other and other related things. So they're they're targeting the South Pole to land to check and verify that there's water there inside those craters. Cool. We think we not only think there is theoretically we have some measurements that there's likely water there. And now we're going to go and verify for sure. Because if there is, you don't need to bring water to the moon to drink. Oh, look at that. It's part of what's called ISRU, in situ resource utilization, which is a NASA thing. And uh, so. Why, why, why bring sand to the beach? Why bring water to the moon? <laughs> oh, God. You ain't got to bring water to the moon. Right, right, right. I like that. Why bring sand to the beach? Very good. Right. There Unless you your beach ain't got no sand. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a rocky beach, I might bring sand. Beach. Right, right. So, so all of this is related to the fact that the sun doesn't get very high in the sky at the poles. That's all. That's, that's, pre- that's why I started on Earth and I landed on the moon for this explainer. That's very cool. That and I it, love. I love it. That's why NASA, we're checking out the South Pole. It'll be a geologically, chemically interesting pl- next place to visit. Wow. So we go to the moon to look for water in a cold trap. In a cold trap. And they'll need their own lights to see their way around. Right. Plus, I, I, it's not this way because it's like molecule deposits, but you'd have to mine the water through the material. You bring the lunar material through and sift out the water molecules, and then you have a, a puddle of water. What they could do is sprinkle the water back in and then go ice skating, maybe. <laughs> oh, that'd be good. That's kind of cool. <laughs> Unless it's too cold to ice skate. That could happen. I think we did an explain. We did do it. How oh ice gosh. can be too cold to skate on. Yeah. Which yeah. was we did that one a long time long, ago. Long, long time ago. Yeah. We might revisit it. But that's know. a uh, that's a great that's a great explainer if yeah. you want to look yeah. it up. Yeah. All right, Chuck, we gotta run. Oh man, that was cool, man. All right. Well, All I right. can't wait for them to find water on the moon. Where the sun don't shine. Where the sun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson. Chuck, thanks for being there as always. Always a pleasure. Uh Star Talk. Keep looking up. <laughs>